Hey, hey, hey. Nice. So welcome, welcome to the five day spiritual challenge. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to be here. Very excited about doing this. Hey there, Adrian, come on in. We're gonna be talking about the spiritual challenge. Talk about building a sacred space today using a few elements. So as you can see, mine is all cleared off and we're gonna put it together. Definitely, isn't this a beautiful bowl? Yes, this is part of it. Sound is really important too. So bringing bowls like this, this will clear space, clear crystals, clear your energy. Really important, really, really important that we have these tools, that we make it fun, all right? That is really what's important about this, making it fun, making it a place that you want to come back to each and every day. A spiritual practice doesn't have to be hard and drudgery and I have to do it and it's just another thing, right? No, this is a beautiful part of starting right here. Definitely. This is the fun part of it, creating a space that you can feel comfortable, that you can feel comforted, that you can feel love, that you can feel rest, peace. And you don't have to do just one. We're going to talk about how to do it for yourself, but you can have them. I have one for my personal meditations in my bedroom. This is the one I use when I teach online, my, my virtual sacred space and I have a sacred space near my abundance corner in the middle of my house so just different areas at work we'll even be talking about that during this time so yeah come on in post below let me know this is just in the group by the way so very private just in the group let me know if you already have a sacred space if this is the first time you've ever set one up let me know it's always fun to know and I am wanting you guys to post pictures, all right? Post pictures in the group of what your sacred space looks like. We've had a few, and they're just so beautiful to see. And they have energy, and you can feel the essence of it, right? Very important. All right, so post below if you already have a sacred space, if you work in a sacred space, or if this is maybe the first time you'll be setting one up. I want to hear what your answers are, all right? That'll be fun to see. Now, the thing about the spiritual challenge, I was going to get my... I do, but I'm sure I have something to learn. We all have something to learn. And the fun part is that, especially with this, we can change it up as much as we want and change it up with the seasons, which is really fun. So now we've just come into spring, right? And that keeps it fresh and it keeps the energy moving. I mean, that's like a feng shui thing, right? That's just an energy thing. And that's part of it too. Our spiritual practices need to be that way. They need to be in alignment with the earth, with the light, with what is going on so that you can know when to shift, know when to change, know when you're stuck, all right? I know for me lately, it's like, ah, oh, I'm pushing through something. It's deep. And I know a lot of people feel that they want to give up at this time. All right, not so well developed. All right, Elaine, you'll be able to go a little deeper with it, all right? So, yeah. And I just, I just wanted to comment a little bit on the energy going on around now and why right now it is really important to really stick to this kind of practice, to join in with others. When we work with others, we magnify the energy out there. But really, that full moon this weekend, that blue full moon, oh my gosh, was that not intense or what? And yes, traditionally, that is a very intense moon. It's big, it's full, it's spiritual, it's religious, it's even with the calendar, it's right after the equinox. I mean, it has all of this energy, big, huge, and it opens us up to freedom, right? Opens us up to freedom. So yeah, a lot of people are feeling that really heavy energy right now, and for me, that's the best reason to come into this space, to feel that comfort, to just walk in and just go, ah. And that's all we're going to do today is build that space. And that's how we start this practice. All right, Brooke says she does too in front of her bedroom window on top of my dresser. And over the weekend, I cleared it out. I saw you post on Instagram. Uh, the room feels much larger. I'll be resetting everything tonight. Yay, after they've cleared out for the moon and last night. Excellent, Brooke. That's an excellent way to work with it. So Brooke is saying that she does, but she's cleared them all up and taken them out, which is kind of what I've done here, right? I've cleared it all out, and we're going to build this together. And I will say that as I'm doing this, I have to remember one of the first times that I did this with the group. It was in New York. It was at um, Sweet Ohm. Ohm Sweet Ohm in New York. Get it confused with Sweet Ohm, Alabama. Ohm Sweet Ohm in New York where I worked out there. And we did a program for the spring equinox. And they had this beautiful piece of wood. And we brought it in and we taught everybody with Catherine. Catherine, my teacher, was there at the time. So I just thought about that tonight as I cleared it off. Beautiful piece of wood. Michael from Ithaca made this and has a light in it too. So now 
I digress. <laughs> I will say that you, if you've been getting the emails, all right, the pre-emails, then you'll know that we've been talking about the elements. And that's how I like to look at building a space, is look at a few. So I made it kind of simple. A is for air, F is for fire, E is for earth, W for water. So a few elements, and that can help you in many aspects, but in this particular one, figure out, okay, what do I need and what am I missing? And that way you'll feel really balanced because each of those elements have a quality to bringing in. So the, uh, the emails are about that. If you missed it, you can let me know and I can always post that below as well. So hopefully you took these last few days to gather the different elements for yourself. All right, I think we went through one a day and pull them together. And then what we do is we start adding them to our space, all right? So air, fire, earth, water. We look at all of those things. So I'd like to start with the air. So the air you can, actually I like to start with the space, right? Sorry. <laughs> I like to start with the space. So find a space that is kind of quiet, all right? That gives you that ability to kind of close yourself off from everybody else, all right? It doesn't have to be large. And that you feel that you feel safe and comfortable and can build that environment because part of it is building the space and you don't want to be like in the midst of everything and around everything and all that. This energy will just kind of you know, it'll go all over the place. So you want to kind of pull that energy in so that you can raise the higher energy. As you raise higher vibration, the lower vibration falls away. What does that mean? As you raise yourself to feeling, you know, peace and calm and love, those are high, nice vibrations to be in. The stress, the anxiety, the worry, that's what you want to release. So we want to build this energy on a constant basis in our sacred space. So when there are days that you just don't feel good, all you have to do is go into your sacred space and just sit. That's all. That's all. And it feels really nice and really comforting. All right. So once you have your space, all right, and again, you can have more than one. But once you have your main space, then you start to build your elements. So I'm going to bring them here. Now, being that it's the spring, don't laugh, but I'm very abundant in my flowers. All right. Look how nice this is. This is all from the lake. It was up at the Medicine Wheel this weekend. So we have the dogwoods, which are beautiful. We have the azaleas all in here. They're sitting in water. So they're earth and water, and they bring a freshness, and they bring a sense of hope and renewal into your space. Now, something like this, you'll change out, right? And yes, I admit it is a little abundance, but hey, right now, being in the vibration of abundance is what spring is about, right? All right, so we start with that. And then I have this beautiful earth crystal. It's one of the ones that I use a lot for my teaching. Catherine gave it to me, my first crystal ever. And then I can add some light because I have this beautiful construction. So already we start to switch the energy, right? We start to switch it around. And then we start adding other things that we want to bring in. Now, right now is a time of year, too. I love to bring in the Hindu goddess Saraswati, right? She brings us that energy of richness, of abundance, of music, of art. All right, perfect, right? Healing art. This is to help my abundance level in the work that I'm doing right now. I'd love to bring in something like that. All right, and then I have some crystals that I haven't really paid much attention to lately, I have to admit. So I wanted to charge them up and bring them some light and bring them out. One is an amethyst point. Of, I did this the other day. All right, so we've got amethyst, which is a lot of that crown chakra. We have rose quartz, which is really good for the heart chakra, right? And we can place those with the crystals as well. And I like to like look at the space. And as a visual artist and a photographer, hello, I also look at the negative space. Like, how does it fit? How does it feel good? And you start to create a nice little energy, all right? So you can just kind of play with it. And to me, that's actually the fun of it, right? Creating that little space. Now, I also have a little Ganesha. All right, Ganesha helps to remove obstacles, all right? It's a crystal, and it's been carved. And I feel like, all right, right now, this time of year, it does feel like there are some obstacles there. So now that fits there, and now the three and the one, that looks really nice. And then I have my sage. I have some fun sage, and you can collect sage around. You can make your own. This is a handmade one, a bunch of sage put together and just tied. This is really kind of better for the outdoors, I'll be honest, because it burns fast. All right, and then you have other little sages, and I have my Palo Santo. I have my little bowl, so fire energy, air energy mixed in with that as well. All right, and so then we recognize we have fire, air, earth, water right? And we bring the spirit. How beautiful is that, right? Really beautiful. So you can create it. I actually have this other candle too, and I'm going to use it for something else. 
I'm going to use this in another part because it's one of those that you leave burning, and I don't want to leave it burning here where I won't be able to see it. But you can find things like these. You can change the color of your candles. You can change your flowers, right? You can bring other elements. I have the sound bowl, but it doesn't fit up there. You could put a little sound bowl. You see how the creativity is just so beautiful. And then like Brooke was saying, when she brings her crystals in from the moon, you can take these out, and then you bring them in. Right, And you keep refreshing that energy over and over. You don't want it to get dusty, dirty, stale. right? Sometimes I can leave mine up a little too long and I have to tell myself the same thing. And then you clean it up and recharge it. And they like the crystals like it. The space likes it. And you feel good. Yeah. So just take a deep inhale. Because now the fun part is just to sit. Right? Just sit. You can turn some music on. And just let the vibration start to build. Offer gratitude for this beautiful space. For gratitude for your day. I'm sure you can find something, right? Something to be grateful for. The beautiful sunshine here. I know New York, you had snow. But you can find something. Maybe you got a day off. For just your life, just gratitude. And just close your eyes for a moment and feel the energy of your space. can set an intention or you can just sit. Breathe, we'll talk about breath tomorrow. But for now, this is all you have to do to start your practice, this is it. And commit to coming back here. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels good to just sit. A simple expression of who you are, where your work is right now, or your life, or your romance, or wherever it is for you. Whatever the sacred space needs to be in your life right now. A place of comfort, a place to open your heart, to look at yourself. That's probably the harder part, right? But with compassion, compassion for yourself. That's where you'll grow, that's where you experience life, and that's where you'll feel the richness and what you bring to the world. Yeah. Another breath or two. All right. So that's it. As simple as that to start. And tomorrow we'll build. One step at a time, but commit. Clear your space tonight or in the morning before we come back next tomorrow. I'll be asking tomorrow. All right, commit to the challenge. All right, challenge yourself to make it through these five days. All right, to make it more fun, I actually am offering whoever posts the most, pictures the most throughout the whole challenge be entered to win an Akashic Record reading with me. Yep, Akashic Record reading, hugely powerful right now. Love them, I'll be offering that for whoever posts the most during the five days. And then a little extra bonus too, Whoever posts the most, whoever brings the most people in, three or more people into the group and posts with them, get them in the group, will be entered to win a spot in my group program coming up at the end of the month. Yes, you'll get a seat on Zoom in my program, all right? So I'll post that information too. Share below, let me know how you like this. All right, guys, this is fun, this is light, spirit loves amusement, really. Puja, offer Thanksgiving, say a prayer, Bring in your guides. We'll talk about that as we grow the spiritual practice. But for now, create your space. Post below. I want to see your pictures. Thank you for being here. To your spirit. Namaste. Oops. <laughs>